Friday the 25th of February and as we all know yesterday Russia invaded Ukraine which I'm not going to talk about except to say that it's tragic and it's made me very anxious for the people of Ukraine I really feel for them and also because I have this feeling that it will just escalate into something bigger and my anxiety is going and, and it's just uh, really playing on my mind been playing on my mind since yesterday I just hope things settle down and uh, they talk that's pretty much all I can say about that really but uh, you all know about what's going on as of this very moment the last thing I saw on the news is that uh, the capital is under attack and uh, it looks like they're asking civilians to fight for their country which is madness in this day and age so it's quite a depressing time to be talking so moving on from that devastating news there is a reason that I'm doing a vlog today anyway which is because I wanted just to update uh, my channel update you just with things that have been going on there's a couple of things just to talk about the first one is um, what I'm recording this today mostly not because of what unfortunately happened yesterday and is continuing to happen but uh, because tomorrow is the National Cross Country Championships and I entered it a few, I think it was a month ago my plan has been to do it because I haven't done the National Cross Country Championships since 2015 in fact I haven't done a cross country race I think since then and it's in Parliament Hill which is the same place I did it last time so Parliament Hill in London is, in my opinion, one of the best locations for a national cross-country. Not necessarily geographically, but in just in terms of the course. It's got a look over London, and you've got two laps of 6k of mud and hills. And it's a really tough course, but it, it's, it's, it's a really great course. You do need to be quite fit to just finish it, really, um, let alone do well in it. I've done it twice there. I've done, I don't know how many national cross countries I've done probably about five national cross countries but two of those have been at Parliament Hill and the first time I did it there was in 2009 and I think I finished something like 470th out of about 2,000 men which was reasonably good I think I, I was pretty pleased with that and I still am quite you know uh, proud of that because it, it's a tough it's a tough race you get a lot of really good runners uh, turn up to that so to finish in the top quarter is actually quite an achievement the second time I did it in 2015, I think I would have been something like 600 out of about 2,000. I wasn't as fit then. Um, but tomorrow, I'm not even sure if I'm going to do it. And the reason for that is not even because of my fitness. I'm not very fit and I haven't done any of the training that I wanted to do. And the reason for that, mostly, has been down to the fact that since I last recorded the video I came down with some sort of throat infection or chest infection I think it was it wasn't really a, it was kind of a chest throat thing and it wiped me out I mean I lost my voice I, um, I just felt wiped out it wasn't COVID I did do tests and, and it came back negative it probably wasn't COVID but uh, it, you know it, it this was so uh, this was about two three weeks ago when I started to come down here with it and for about a week yeah about a week and a half I was wiped out and and then about um, just over a week ago a week Tuesday so a week and three days went out for a little jog and I didn't feel too bad and I thought great you know by now I should be able to have gotten completely I should be completely over the the virus or whatever it is and then I should be able to at least turn up healthy to the event knowing that I hadn't done much training thinking well you know I'll just run around and I want to record it put the head cam on and record it and just try and enjoy it just be part of it get some motivation to sort of train a bit more to perhaps do some more events that was the thinking but annoyingly and the other thing that stopped me has been that my calf, especially my right calf, as you probably might know if you've watched any of my vlogs, it's been playing up again. Uh, they were starting to knot up. In fact, the week, uh, the weekend just gone, on the Sunday, I had planned to do an eight mile slow run just to sort of make sure I've got the endurance. But I didn't run because just walking around the house, my calf knotted up, which is nuts. Uh, so it's just, they're really, I don't know, they're really re reactive to any sort of, 
load up on them at the moment. So that's something that's going to be an ongoing thing. So I didn't run instead, instead on that day, I did circuits, a 30 minute circuit session, which um, it's not the same as an eight mile run. Since then, all I did was I've done, what was it? I think on the Monday, I did nothing. I don't No, Did I do anything? I can't remember what I did on Monday. Uh, the Tuesday I did a very short two and a half mile run with some strides at the end. And uh, funny thing about that actually is it was dark. It was around a little park by my um, house and it was dark. And when I was running back after doing my strides, there's a little gap between some houses where you can kind of come out and uh, they got some old fence, fence posts. Uh, most of them have gaps except one of them, or one of the, the posts, between one of the posts or two of the posts I tried to run through, there was some thin wire that was there and I couldn't see it. And I ran straight into it and it went into my, into my leg just here and uh, completely stopped me in my tracks. And I've actually got a lovely lying bruise across my thighs there, which is not great, but anyway, I'll survive. So anyway, that was that. So I did that, that was all I did. Thinking, just try and keep my body as fresh as possible and the muscles as good as possible. And then Wednesday I swam about 800 meters and that was it. I was thinking about doing a jog yesterday, but just didn't feel up to it. And today I'm just gonna go for a little walk now, about um, three kilometer walk around this area, around Holt. Lovely little area, I used to walk around here quite a lot when I used to work close to here. Anyway, the point is, I still might not do it tomorrow because for some reason, from the start of this week, I've been getting a bit of a cough again, and my throat, and I, it's like a, it's almost like I have asthma. It's like a, like a tickly kind of, not really a tickly cough, but I'm sort of reacting to, I don't know, it's almost like it's, it, it's like the cold air or something. It's not actually the cold air, but you know when the air is cold and you get that sort of cough from it, it's kind of like that, but it happens and it seems to happen more in the evening. But the past couple of days, it's just been worse and it's been making me cough more and more. And looking at my throat in the mirror, it's all red at the back. I've got lots of mucus there. Sorry about that, too much information. And I've also got a canker sore. I've got at least one canker sore at the back, like a little all sort of thing at the back of the throat. I get those quite often when I run down. And uh, I just, I don't know. I don't know if I'm well enough to go all the way to London. I'm talking a three hour drive here with my family. And then running 12K through mud and hills, potentially not finishing if I'm feeling that bad. And even the camera might be messed up because it, from what I've heard, it's extremely wet and muddy, which is kind of normally fine. But I mean, if I'm wearing the camera, it might just get plastered in mud. Oh, look at that airplane. You get quite a lot of airplanes around this area, especially RAF ones, and they fly really low. Uh, but norm normally so many small planes like that. Sometimes I can walk through here and you get a, uh, like a Hercules or something, and it'll fly across. And it'll, be, it'll feel like it's about 50 meters above you. It probably is, to be honest. Sometimes they fly so low. Really impressive. But um, anyway, so yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna try and release this video tonight because it's just literally me talking, so it should be quick to edit. I just, I don't know what I should do. If it was a closer race, I just would have turned up and, and done it. If I can find a hotel tonight that's cheap enough to justify staying there that night, then at least I can just think of it as going to London, because it's gonna be sunny on the weekend, and we'll have a look around and enjoy that. And then there's the risk that I might waste Saturday by going down to the, the race, starting. I should probably be able to get, I mean, if I start and I do have to fall out, I would expect to get at least probably halfway three to six kilometers in before I'd have to stop. I mean I know in terms of my legs that they can handle they can handle I mean last week I did a nearly seven mile run with um, about eight efforts of about two minutes like a fart leg so my legs can kind of cope with with that sort of distance almost but I don't know if my body can so that's one of my dilemmas well that's one well, no, that is my dilemma I don't know what to do. Look, some uh, ponies here. Are these ponies? Hello. Are you a pony or a horse? You're a pony, aren't you? You gonna say something? No. Nope. Uh, I think he's shy. There's two more over there. Too busy eating. Oh, there you are. Hello. These ponies, they just kind of carry on with what they're doing, but horses tend to come over to you. 
So that's the National Cross Country. I, I want to do it. And I might, and I might not, I'm not sure. I think what I might just do is pack all my stuff tonight, get everything ready as if I'm going, and just make a call on it tomorrow morning when I get up, see how I feel. If I feel the same as now, or better, I'll probably go. If I feel worse, I'll probably just stay at home. There's another airplane there. I thought it was a helicopter for a moment. So, uh, this is what I love about England. You get all these sort of really strange styles and gates to climb over. When you walk in, it makes it more interesting. When you're running, it's a bit of a pain, unless you want to break, and it's a good excuse to just stop for a bit. See, that was a bit of a wood style. And then here you've got this like stone thing, which looks like it's about to collapse. And then mud. So you see how the mud is here. This is how it's going to start tomorrow at the National Cross Country. Except I would be in the senior men's race, which is at about 3 p.m., just under 24 hours from now. But before that, you'd have the under 13s, the under 15s, the under 17, the under 20, male and female. So by the time they've run through the course, they've churned it up, and you, you're, going to, you're talking about mud up to your ankles or higher for most of the run. So it's, it's kind of fun in a way. Well, it's not, it's not fun. The National Cross Country is not fun. It's tough, it's really tough. You get some of the best runners in the country there. Um, I mean, you get the guys at the front, they'll be running five minute mile pace for that mud. It's absolutely nuts, but there we are. My uh, a coach that I see sometimes, Julian Gota, he, uh, he was an international athlete and he won the National Cross Country at Parliament Hill, I think in the 80s, when it was actually, a, it was a longer course then, it was about 16, 15, 16K, so closer to 10 miles. And he won the race by nearly two minutes, which is amazing, really, considering that he was running against some very good runners. I mean, for example, in his race, and this guy didn't even come second, was uh, Steve Jones, who I think the same year or the following year broke the world record for the marathon. So you can get an idea of the, the caliber of uh, runners that he beat that day. Pretty impressive. Oh, look at this mud here. Yeah, this is what we're talking about. It's going to be like this. I mean, that's just going to splash on the camera, isn't it? I don't know if it's worth... Is it worth trying to film when my camera's just going to get covered in mud? It would be lovely to have a, a virtual run of the cross-country, plus, and I could use that as a vlog. I also want to do a review of some... Ooh, God, try that again. I also want to do a review of... <coughs> oh, see, I'm coughing now. I also want to do a review of some more mile spikes that I've got this time. So I bought some more mile cross, um, some more mile trail shoes and I, those broke, but I actually replaced them. And then the other day I bought some more mile cross country spikes, which were 30 pound again, really cheap. I haven't even tried them on yet, so I don't actually know if they hit my feet. I have to do that tonight, but uh, I want to try and do a review video of that as well if I can. So um, I'm going to use the cross country as a test if I do it. So that'd be another, another reason to do it. And I'll let you know how they are. So moving on from cross country, we'll see what happens about that. Next vlog, you'll know if I did or didn't do it. But moving on from that, I um, also had another bit of a disaster. Uh, about, must have been about three weeks ago now. I, it was a foggy, misty morning, but it was one of those mornings where the mist or the fog was quite thin and quite low. And I thought, I bet if I take my drone up, I can get above it. You know, when you get that sort of sea of mist and then it's all clear above. So I took the drone up, I took, it flew it from my garden and I took it up into the air and it was, it was just sort of misty. And I thought, mm, I thought I'll just take it a bit higher, a bit higher than you're supposed to really. And I took it up and it went above all the mist or the fog. And I thought, oh, brilliant. And it looked amazing. It was like, um, like a sea of fog. I'll show you a clip as I'm talking. And, uh, you know, the sun was out and you could just, you couldn't really see anything apart from the fog and this, look at this tree here, it's probably a casualty of the recent storm we've had. Actually, no, it's not, it's been there for a while, hasn't it? We had a storm recently called Storm Eunice, which is actually named my wife, which is quite funny. Um, and that caused quite a lot of damage. It was probably, we had like 90, 80, 90 mile an hour gusts of winds around this area. In one part of the UK, I think in the Isle of Wight, they had, they recorded 122 mile an hour wind. Uh, which is pretty strong, even by um, hurricane standards, I, I think. So, um, there's some more horses over here, look. 
So anyway, I was flying the drone up and got it quite high, got a good view, and I just started flying it across. Hello. There we go, that's a proper horse. Those are definitely ponies. So I was flying it really high and then I noticed, because I thought I knew the battery had been charged, but for some reason, I think it had lost about 30% of its charge. And I noticed that actually it didn't have a huge amount of battery left. And the other problem was, of course, because it was high up above the, the fog, I couldn't actually see it. So I started to sort of panic a bit, thinking, oh God, I, I hope it doesn't just, I hope I can get it back in time. So I brought it to, I brought it over using my controller so I knew where it was, roughly. I brought it above the valley below me, the woods below me, where there were no people. I don't know there were no people, you'd hardly get people there. And uh, I thought, well, I can't, I've got to bring it down now, I've got to get it down as quick as I can. So I just held the, the, the control, the button to pull it down to, to make it go towards landing as tight as I could. And for some reason it just was, it was just creeping down really slowly. I was thinking, come on, come on, get down. Then it had about 30 seconds of battery left and I could just see it just coming down from the really thick fog. And I thought, oh, this is too high. I need to get it down. And it, I carried on trying to get it down and down. I made sure it's positioned in a sort of safe place so that if it fell out of the sky, it wouldn't hit anybody. And then it got down to zero seconds. And I thought, oh no, it's just gonna drop. And it carried on flying. I thought, oh, maybe it's got some reserve, which it did have, but I didn't know how much. And I was trying to bring it down, trying to bring it down. And then a few seconds later, it just stopped spinning and just dropped out of the sky. And it must have been about 80 meters up, something like that. And my heart just sank and I just thought, oh no. And uh, I was in my flip flop, so I ran in, got my shoes on, ran down and it landed. Well, it kind of landed. It kind of hit a tree, landed right next to the stream or the river at the bottom. And uh, I couldn't find it at first, well I could find bits of it, basically it smashed to pieces. So that's my drone, rest in peace. I no longer have a drone and it's quite a lot of money to replace that. I don't know what to do because I had two batteries for it, I had a controller, they're both in good condition. One of the batteries looks a bit damaged but I think it will work. But the body is completely, it's just, I mean it's in one piece essentially but it's just broken off and things. So, part of me is thinking, maybe if I just buy a replacement body, which you can get on eBay for around £100, but apparently doesn't sync with the controllers, and I'm not really sure, it's a risk. So I don't really know what to do, because to buy a new drone, I'd be better off actually just buying a DJI Mavic Mini or something like that, which is a bit more expensive, but for the extra money I'm paying, I'd, I'd get something that's more useful, because it's lighter, smaller and easier to set up. But at least for the time being, I don't have a drone and I don't know what I'm going to do about that. Maybe I will get another one, but it won't be for a while. The main reason I can't get another one is because I don't have the money. So if I did buy a body to replace the body that I lost, then um, I'd have to pay for it uh, over monthly payments or something. That's literally how tight money is at the moment. I I could probably afford 10, 20 pound a month. So yeah, so no more drone. I mean, at the moment, I don't need it for anything. It would have been nice to have had it for Saturday if I'd taken it to the National Cross Country and then film um, some of the course, you know, from above, that would be quite cool, but that's not an option now. Uh, hopefully they won't make much of a difference. Maybe I can afford one in a few months. Who knows? So that's my drone. No longer have a drone. And that's that. So the final thing I wanted to talk about was a new idea for a video called RunQuest. And it's an idea I've been brewing in my head for a while. So I'm not gonna start filming it necessarily anytime soon. I'm hoping to start maybe in spring because I haven't actually thought of the story yet. But the idea is essentially, it's set probably in medieval time or back in time, not in current time. So I'm gonna use all the natural forests and countryside around where I live to film 
like a story. So it'd be shot from first person point of view, so like a virtual run almost. And I would play a character of say, like a messenger or Robin Hood or someone like that. And I'll try and get my friends to be actors in it. And so as I go through, you would come across people and they would tell you things. And each video would be quite short, maybe one, two minutes long. And I maybe I'd add some medieval music and uh, some, some odd things like that. And there'd be like a mission to, to complete. And at the end of each video, you would be given two choices. So on YouTube, at the end of each video, you can choose, you can put videos to click on to watch next. So the idea is that I would use those placeholders to put the two options. So I'd have either go this way or go this way or do this or don't do this. And based on which one you click on, it takes you down a different route in the story. So I'd obviously have to film lots of alternative routes through. Uh, but I thought it might be quite interesting. So a bit of fun and something to sort of uh, add a bit of excitement or interest to the channel maybe. Because a lot of the stuff I've been doing is kind of either vlogs or virtual runs and uh, or, or um, race videos. Well, not many of those, but... It's getting a bit tedious for me and, and I kind of want to do something a bit more interesting. And to be honest, I don't get that many, my vlogs don't get many views and um, my virtual runs get the most views, but I don't want to just do virtual runs. I want to make something interesting. I quite enjoyed making the short horror films that I've made recently. I've still got one of those to edit actually. So if you've made it this far in the video, then let me know what you think about that idea in the comments. Let me know if you would like to see that. I've also thought about maybe making that into a game as well, like a 2D game. Uh, one that you could potentially download as an app and play on your phone. So you'd be like a 2D character that, that has to run along and it'd be a bit different. So you'd have um, things like, for example, if you ran on and you slipped on dog poo, you'd lose points or something like that. Or if you um, came across a hill, You'd, have to, you'd use your energy more quickly, so you'd have to sort of conserve energy, or... I'm not really sure, I'm just still thinking of that, and I'd probably try and get some music on there and things. And I had this idea of having that game with, like, um, a feature where you can create a playlist, so you can add your own music and play that while you're playing the game. So, anyway, it's just an idea. Let me know in the comments if you like that idea. <laughs> the game would probably take a long time to make, and I, I mean, I've got the technical ability, I don't have the artistic ability in terms of the graphics, but um, I'm a software developer, so I, I would be able to make it function or make it work, just uh, not necessarily make it look pretty. But let me know if you're interested in that, because it's something that I'm kind of interested in doing if I ever get the time. And uh, on that note, so the only thing really that's uncertain for me personally at the moment is whether or not I'm going to do the cross country tomorrow in less than 24 hours. If I do do it and I finish, I'm going to finish near the back and I'm going to get lapped by people, which I've never experienced before. Uh, but I've just got to let go of that and just realise that I'm just trying to take part and enjoy it. And I, I know that I, I couldn't possibly run anywhere near as well as I've run in the past. So just finishing will be an achievement. But the main thing really is I just want to show my support for the people of Ukraine and my disgust at what Russia are doing. Pretty much, I think pretty much everyone would agree how disgusting and horrendous it is. I'm powerless to help. I'm powerless to make a difference. Same when it comes to other conflicts like in Syria and things like that. What can you do? There's nothing you can do. And in some ways we shouldn't really put too much energy in feeling anxious and whatever about it because the reality is there isn't anything we can do. And it doesn't help anybody to spend your whole time being stressed and anxious about things out of your control. The best thing you can do is just stay grounded, send positive messages to people, be happy, be positive around other people, make them feel good, it makes the world a little bit better. If you can't control the big things like that, then maybe you can control the small things and help people around you feel better. So that's the end of my walk and the end of this vlog. I hope wherever you are in the world that you're safe and well, and if you are running or a runner, I hope your running's going well. And I will see you again soon. Bye.